Welcome to TechSoup. This is a new member orientation. I am so, so glad you are here today. Uh, I'm going to move out of the way very quickly. I'm going to show you how you can engage today. Um, if this is your first time here on any of our webinars, uh, we would ask you to put your questions in the Q&A section. You can type them in the chat room, but we prefer them in the Q&A and we'll answer them as we go along. Check your inbox in about 48 hours. We're going to send you the video replay of this webinar and the slides. If you need the closed caption, I'm gonna turn that on. Just type on the CC button at the bottom of your screen and you'll be able to see the closed caption. I'm gonna show you our speakers for today. I am Aretha Simons. I am the webinar producer here at TechSoup. And we have on the next slide, we have Nick Finn. He is the senior director here at TechSoup. We have Kevin Mohall, and he is a TechSoup customer success manager. And then we have the one and only Carrie. Kelly Garrett. She's associate manager for TechSoup Client Services, and they're going to tell you more. Nick, I'm going to turn this over to you, and thank you all for being here today. Great. Thanks, Aretha, and um, welcome, everybody. Uh, often I start these calls by saying good morning, but you know what? I know for some folks we're past that already, and it's the early, early afternoon where you are. Um, this is a national webinar across the entirety of the United States. Um, I'm coming live to you from the Bay Area, Oakland in particular. You can see the lovely Golden Gate Bridge behind me there, although that's not truly what the scene is outside my window. Um, but uh, welcome to the Intro to TechSoup um, for New Members 101. Um, uh, the purpose of today's webinar is to help folks who have just joined and nonprofits who have just joined TechSoup to better understand what TechSoup is, how we can help you specifically, and to highlight some specific things at TechSoup that are probably worth a little bit of your attention. Um, but before I get going on all of this, I wanna start with a quick buzzword alert and talk about three specific terms that you may hear coming up, both in this webinar and then in other materials from TechSoup. The first one is the notion of digital transformation. Digital transformation really just means that your nonprofit is becoming more tech savvy. You're using technology tools to help manage staff. Staff are using tech tools to help do the jobs that they're assigned to do. And perhaps you're actually using technology itself to address your own mission, whatever that might be. And we have a lot of nonprofits with lots of different missions out there. The second term I wanna highlight is civil society. And something else you might hear in this presentation and in other TechSoup materials. And really, when we talk about civil society, we're talking about non-governmental people and organizations, 501c3s, nonprofits, those of us on this call. And then the third term that you may hear about quite a bit is cloud adoption. And cloud adoption really just means that your nonprofit is using the modern technology tools available to it that are really cloud-based um, uh, instead of what, you know, what we call on-premises tools, which are digital tools that are just on your specific computer and maybe not connected to the cloud, not getting backed up, and maybe that information isn't as secure as we'd like it to be. All right, let's get into the real meat of what we're talking about today, though. And it starts with answers to the question, what is TechSoup? In my life, lots of people ask me that question all the time, including my friends, people I live with. Um, and what I really find is actually it's a complex answer. TechSoup is a lot of different things, which is why it merits its own slide here. The first thing is TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization like you. We're not a business. We're not a corporation. We are a nonprofit. We, many, most of the employees, I think, at TechSoup have experience working in nonprofits outside of TechSoup as well. And what this means is that we really understand what it means to be a 501c3. And for most of us, that includes having a budget that is not what like giant corporations have or even large businesses. We know what it means to try to do more with less and still stay focused on the mission that we're supposed to accomplish for people. The second thing TechSoup is, is, a, is an organization with a mission. And our mission is to support other nonprofits, by the way, not just in the United States, but around the world, um, but to support you as you use technology 
to help build a more equitable planet. And we say it that way because we really do believe that nonprofits are at the forefront of making the world a better place and correcting some of the problems that we know exist. The third thing TechSoup is, is a catalog of technology offers and products. And this is a really interesting one because it's what a lot of nonprofits come to TechSoup for first, and then they learn about the other things that we can help them with and they diversify how they work with us. But we do several different things at TechSoup with a product catalog. We work with major brands, which we'll talk about more in this presentation. You see some of them on the screen, Microsoft and Dell and Adobe and many, many more. And we work with them to provide discounted pricing on technology products just to help nonprofits a little bit more because we know that tech can be expensive sometimes. In addition to the other corporations we work with, TechSoup also provides its own services to nonprofits. Because we know in the modern world, it's not enough to just pay for a technology solution. There's so much work that happens after that, implementing that technology solution, making sure that it's set up correctly, helping staff and volunteers to use that tool properly, and then managing it over the life of that tool. These are all things that nonprofits are learning how to do. And the services TechSoup provides help fill that gap so that your staff and leadership know how to work with these tech products. And then finally, we're also an education institution. We provide courses and trainings to nonprofit staff, nonprofit leaders and volunteers on all sorts of technology topics. Um, and you're gonna learn a little bit more about that in this presentation as well. So let's go, oh, and one more thing, sorry. Um, TechSoup is also, a grant-based programming provider. So many of the nonprofits on this webinar right now rely on grants for funding to execute their mission. And so does TechSoup. We use grants um, to help deliver some specific programming in different areas. So lots of overlap between how we operate and you operate as well. So let's talk about TechSoup as a 501c3 and as I said, not just in the United States, but a global, but a global network as well. As a nonprofit, we believe that tech can really help nonprofits. We have a perspective on that. We really think that it's a powerful, powerful tool. And when you understand it and you know how to use it, it becomes a help, not a hindrance. We also know cost is a major blocker around technology. And that's, as I say, why we negotiate special pricing for nonprofits. Um, and in some cases, we know nonprofits have saved as much as $18,000 over the lifetime of their usage of TechSoup. That may not be true for your nonprofit if you're a smaller one, but just to put some perspective on how valuable that TechSoup relationship can be. We know another major blocker for technology use is expertise and training. And as I said, that is something we really try to address in our catalog to help folks know how to use technology. So in my second bullet on that beginning slide, I talked about how TechSoup has a catalog of technology offers. So I wanna drill into that a little bit more specifically here because a lot of nonprofits start their relationship with TechSoup because they need a single thing and they hear about TechSoup, they come and sign up with us, um, and they get access to that tool. So let's talk about how that product catalog works. Now, if you have been to TechSoup.org, and I think everybody on this webinar probably has, um, this is what the homepage basically looks like. You'll see that we have right in the center of that front page, valuable real estate we all know on a website, right, um, is the link to browse the TechSoup catalog. So I'm just calling that out for you right here. If you click on that link, it takes you to the TechSoup catalog. And I'm gonna highlight some of the offers that we know are most important to the nonprofits that come and visit us. It starts with our relationship with Microsoft and probably everyone on this call in some way is using that Microsoft catalog there really are a distinct set of offers that most nonprofits orient around now. One is what's called Microsoft Office. We all know that. We've all used it probably for decades. Well, some of us, maybe the younger ones haven't. Um, 
But Microsoft Office itself has gone through quite the evolution in the decades of its existence. And today, the current version of Office really is Microsoft 365. It's a cloud-based productivity suite. TechSoup carries that product through our relationship with Microsoft and thousands of nonprofits work with TechSoup to administer their Microsoft 365 um, platform. And you know that platform includes the stuff that we all use, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, Outlook, all those programs that you're used to thinking about. We also do still provide a version of Microsoft Office that is on-premises. On-premises meaning that it's not a cloud-based system. It sits on your local computer. It gets some updates over the course of a couple of years, but at a certain point, it stops getting updates. And over time, after that's happened, it will become outdated. That's the advantage to cloud-based platforms is they're really not gonna become outdated because they get continuous background updates. Um, and then of course, the Windows Pro full operating system, um, which unless you're using an Apple computer or maybe a device with Linux on it, um, you're probably using the Windows operating system and TechSoup provides access to that. So if your nonprofit is using Microsoft or you'd like to be using Microsoft products and you wanna make sure you've got the latest stuff, TechSoup can help with that. Um, and that includes upgrading current versions of Windows as well. Another large partner that lots of nonprofits work with through TechSoup is Adobe. Adobe, of course, and I'm originally a communications person, so I love Adobe products. I've worked with them for decades as well. Um, probably the best known is Adobe Creative Cloud, which is a suite of products that include names that you probably know, like Photoshop and InDesign and Dreamweaver and Illustrator. If you have a director of communications or you have a designer on staff, or, or maybe you're one yourself, um, you know all about Creative Cloud. Um, Creative Cloud is one of the standard pieces of software out there that anybody who's doing any kind of visual communications, especially digital visual communications, they're probably using it. Um, Acrobat Pro DC is another super important product from Adobe that's available through the TechSoup catalog. Adobe created the PDF, like they invented that. And Acrobat Pro DC is probably the best platform out there for producing, editing, and managing PDFs. We have a new offer from Adobe that's super exciting called Adobe Express, which was just added to the catalog a few months ago. Um, and uh, we're super excited to see how nonprofits feel about Adobe Express. Um, my personal guess is it's probably something that's better for smaller nonprofits who maybe don't have the expertise to use Creative Cloud, but it has similar tools in it to help you provide or to help you to create really good digital communications. There's also a Teams membership available, um, which is Creative Cloud for Education. Um, all of this is in the TechSoup online catalog that is linked to in this presentation. And I do want to point out, by the way, after this webinar is done, you will receive a copy of this presentation. There are live links throughout it. You can click on those links. They'll take you directly to the place that you need to go. Intuit QuickBooks is another huge thing that nonprofits come to TechSoup for. Um, Probably everyone on this call knows about Intuit QuickBooks if you're not already using it, but it's really QuickBooks Online Plus right now that is at the center of the TechSoup um, catalog. Um, and there's also QuickBooks Online Advanced. Um, and we do have a link here to the online FAQ for QuickBooks. Again, when you get this presentation, if QuickBooks is something you're specifically interested in, click on through to that. There are many more brands available in the TechSoup catalog, by the way. I've just highlighted three that we know, like numerically know, that tons of nonprofits focus on when they come to the TechSoup catalog. Here are some other examples of some other brands that are available in the catalog. And in fact, today, I want to highlight for folks this one in particular, which is GrantStation. GrantStation is an online tool that nonprofits use, and it's designed just for nonprofits to research who they could submit grant proposals to. And what's great about GrantStation is all the listings in GrantStation 
are accepting unsolicited um, uh, RFPs. And so it means that you can do research and then contact that organization directly. That's different than a lot of grant making areas where you have to have almost a prior relationship with the grant maker and have a negotiation and a conversation before you're really submitting grants. Like they need to know more upfront. But with GrantStation, you can do some outreach um, without having talked to that grant maker before. Right now on TechSoup.org, just today and just tomorrow, GrantStation is doing a special promotion. It's $99 for a full year of a Grant Station subscription. Uh, we run this promotion twice a year. It's always in February or September. Um, it's something that thousands of nonprofits take from uh, TechSoup every year. And so if you are in particular thinking a lot about how to find new grant-based funding opportunities for your nonprofit, um, you may wanna check out that Grant Station promotion um, for $99. Uh, that's a pretty low price for the incredible amount of data that you actually get access to. And who knows, you may actually find your next grant funding opportunity through the GrantStation platform. Um, there's a link to that in the chat. And again, as I said, um, it will also be in this deck, which you'll receive after the webinar. Um, and again, that special $99 offer ends tomorrow at 5 p.m., um, and wouldn't happen again, we think, until February of next year. Um, the usual price for Grant Station in the TechSoup catalog is $299. So you'd be saving $200. And usually, a Grant Station membership just purchased through Grant Station themselves without a promotion around it is $699. So it's quite a bit of money that you'd be saving if you do if you do check that out. All right. Another huge product line at TechSoup that nonprofits take advantage of is hardware. We all know that in particular during the pandemic, supply chain issues have made tracking down hardware pretty difficult sometimes. Um, but TechSoup has maintained pretty robust set of relationships with some great hardware brands and lots of nonprofits have been using us over the past few years to help, uh, you know, bring in the hardware that they need. Um, we have a link here to the entire hardware catalog. I'm not going to go through it in great depth, but three of the biggest brands that we work with are Dell, Lenovo, and HP. Household names, they have great relationships with TechSoup, and um, you know, nonprofits are more than happy to work with those three companies to get their hardware needs met. Um, Journey Ed is another hardware brand that we carry, which has a bunch of different stuff in it. Um, and I also want to call out our refurbished hardware catalog. Um, this is one of the areas that TechSoup actually has been a leader in for quite some time, which is, you know, instead of a fairly new computer that's not being used anymore, just being thrown into the trash, we work with hardware refurbishers who actually take used computers, make sure that they're still up to spec that they can still perform as folks need them to. And then those refurbished hardware units are sold. Of course, not as expensive as a brand new hardware product, but a great way to fill the gap if you've got a tight budget, but still need to bring some more hardware. Um, and I also want to call out that for the entire month of October, so not right now, but starting in 10 days, um, there is a 10% rebate on refurbished hardware. That's another special that will be going on at TechSoup and be worth checking out if that's something on your, uh, on your radar as new hardware. This is how you find hardware. First, you have to link, you have to click through to the product catalog here, and then you'll find this hardware notion up here on the left. All right. Now, you remember I set up at the front that it's not really enough these days to buy technology or pay for technology. Um, there's so much actually that comes after the acquisition of technology that makes a huge difference uh, on, in how your nonprofit uses it. You have to implement that technology properly. It has to be managed properly. Um, staff and um, leaders need to be trained how to use it properly. Um, and so over time, TechSoup has started to really understand that nonprofits need more than just access to tech at a lower price point that helps them afford it. They also need a lot of help in managing and implementing those technology products. So we over time have developed different services to help nonprofits who need that. So let's talk about TechSoup services. 
Right here is where you would access that in the navigation menu. It's the second item up there, right next to the product catalog, right? Um, the first is services to help support IT professionals, folks who are working in nonprofits as the de facto leader of the IT department. I know I saw at least one person um, in chat as they were logging in, you know, identify themselves as accidental IT or temporary IT. Um, hey, this is a role that lots of us are familiar with. Um, it is just the case sometimes there are some people who are more intuitive with tech than other people. And often in workplaces, especially when people are wearing multiple hats in a small organization, some folks will emerge as like the de facto IT leader, even though that's not at all in their job description. And that's just one of the ways people are, right? We adapt, we meld into the environment we're in, and we try to provide as much help as we can. The services that TechSoup provides to support people like that, there are a few of them. Help Desk is one of the probably best known. It's sort of a limited help because really it's like troubleshooting one device. But if you do have a specific device at your nonprofit that really just seems to perennially need help, Help Desk is a product that you might want to look into. Super affordable, maybe as much as 350 over the course of an entire year. Um, for folks that are looking specifically into uh, Microsoft, um, we do have an Office 365 email and data migration service. So if you're moving from the on-premises version of Office to a cloud-based version of Office, TechSoup can help you with that. And then uh, we can also help with the installation of some of these um, on-premises platforms as well. Um, the newer versions of on-premises stuff can be a little tricky for installation and TechSoup can provide help with that again. Um, and then at a larger scale for maybe a mid-sized organization, we have a product line called Managed IT. And as you can guess, that's a longer scale solution that it, it goes over time. And the idea really there is that we play a more active role helping you manage the entire technology stack versus just troubleshooting a single thing, which is what that help desk product line does. Um, and then finally, there's a digital assessment tool available on the TechSoup website. Um, this is really a great tool for leaders in a nonprofit if they want to try to assess where their nonprofit needs to do a better job with its digital footprint. And by that, what I mean is like, do you need help doing a better job with online fundraising? Or is there a different thing? Maybe your communications and email outreach need to be better. Um, or maybe your finances need help. Again, like going back to that QuickBooks product we looked at, the digital assessment tool is a set of, it's a fairly complex tool, but it will help walk you through a series of questions about your nonprofit's usage of tech and help you identify maybe where the weak spots are. Um, we do know that one of the biggest areas nonprofits ask for help on is in digital communications. How do we communicate with our supporters, our donors, the people that we serve, journalists, maybe the community that we're in, maybe our own staff, since everybody's working remotely in distributed environments now. And the question is, how do we use these modern digital tools to do a better job communicating with all those people? Well, of course, we all know at the center of that <clears throat> is your website, right? That's where everybody's gonna go in the first place to try to find answers to their questions. So over time, we've developed services to help support the communications functions of nonprofits in particular. For instance, the website consultation and development product line, like that's all about helping you have a better website um, and working in a consultancy to help move that forward and make it do a better job. Um, there's also digital marketing services itself. I go back to the standalone there, which is email, right? So if people don't come to your website, the second biggest way that you're talking to them is in your outbound email. How can you do a better job with that? Um, and then finally, a third product that is fairly new, but we're working on building it out at TechSoup is to support nonprofits who are using the Google Ad Grants. Um, if you're not already using that, I encourage you I hate saying it this way, but I encourage you to Google Google Ad Grants um, because what that is, is it's a way that Google will provide nonprofits with a $10,000 monthly stipend that is spendable on advertising on the Google platform. Now, there's some limits around how it can work. There's some caps on how much you can bid for each individual ad, but it's a great offer. 
And we know that nonprofits love the idea of having that, but sometimes, again, it's really implementing the tech and using it that is more of a challenge sometimes than just simply affording it. So our Google Ad Grant service is there to help nonprofits learn more and understand better how to use that product from Google. Um, TechSoup courses, as I mentioned, is another piece of what we offer nonprofits. So let's say you're not looking to go and spend some money on a product right now, but you do know that you've got a staff member, maybe even a board member who just needs more help and on understanding how to use a particular technology product, or, or maybe just generally more help on technology. TechSoup courses here up on the screen is where you can go for that kind of help. These courses are interesting because they're really developed specifically with a nonprofit audience in mind. So it's not the case, as I find, like I try to go online and learn about something new. And so much of the content out there is written for like small businesses or even midsize or larger businesses. But there's some assumptions when you write and explain things for those that are completely out the window for nonprofits, right? We have such a different reality than those types of organizations. Our courses offers are written specifically and developed specifically for nonprofits. And so they really speak to what nonprofits need, not just what the whole world on the internet needs. Um, the courses website itself is actually separate from the TechSoup website. And I just wanna call that out right now because what it means actually is you do have to set up a, another account when you go to the TechSoup courses website, but that is the way it's designed. So don't think you've made a mistake if it's asking you to do that again. Um, some examples or, well, some highlights over that, you know, we've got over 70,000 learners who have used that stuff. We do have both English and Spanish on that platform. Um, as I said, they're all designed specifically for nonprofits, but also anyone can sign up for those courses. Um, and, uh, you know, the topics vary greatly. Uh, this link will take you to a full list of what they are, but like, I know for me, one of the most popular sets of courses I ever take online is always when I'm trying to learn more about Excel, right? Such a powerful piece of software. And you know that there's a way to do the thing you want to do. You just can't figure it out yourself. I'm always looking online for tips and tricks on how to use Excel better. It's certainly not the only thing in there, but it's very popular. Um, and, and in fact, part of its popularity kind of drove TechSoup toward developing this larger thing called the Microsoft Digital Skill Center that we've put together in collaboration with Microsoft themselves to really help nonprofit staff build their skill set around Microsoft products. So again, that's a live link. When you get the presentation, feel free to, feel free to click through to that and check out what you want. Um, there's a foundational skills courses track that that team shared with us that I'm including here. These are not links itself, but you can see how a series of different topics are all grouped together, um, you know, from project management to Excel, as I was just talking about, um, you know, a big topic these days, how to better organize remote working teams, right? Who hasn't been challenged by this notion of no longer having a physical office to go to where you can sit with your coworkers around a table. You can talk to each other. You know, our own emotional intelligence picks up on people's facial expressions. You know, when somebody didn't understand a thing that you said or, um, or that you need more discussion around something. But the world's really changed since then. And so many people are not working together in the same physical location. Um, so remote working teams is a pretty popular piece there. Fundraising, grant writing, email marketing, Google ad grants, all things that we've talked about already in today's webinar. Um, so just a great example of the it, called the nonprofit foundational skills track that would be worth looking at. Um, so now I'm going to hand this over um, to my colleague, Kevin Mulhall, who's here. I think he's going to come up on camera here. And um, as, a, as an introduction, um, Kevin works with the customer success team at TechSoup. And, and I'm going to let Kevin explain what the customer success team really does. But at a high level, um, they're here to help you take that product that you've got and get the most out of it. Um, so, Kevin, welcome. And uh, you've got a great group here. Thanks, Nick. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you all today. Again, my name is Kevin Mahal, and I'm a customer success manager here at TechSoup. For those of you joining us today, you may not have heard of my team, 
And that's completely understandable as we recently just celebrated our department's first birthday. I'll have some additional details regarding our team momentarily. Before beginning, I'd like to start with a quick poll question. There's no need, of course, uh, to uh, respond to this if you don't want to, um, but we're very curious to know, is your organization currently using Microsoft? So we'll give that a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds uh, for folks to reply. You should see a pop-up on your screen um, that does have the poll information. And let's take a look here. It looks like 86%. Wow, this is interesting. So the first uh, orientation we had was 67%. And the last one was 80%. So the word must be getting out uh, on 365. Uh, next slide, please. Speaking to Microsoft Cloud offers themselves on the slide here, we have a breakdown of the pricing between various 365 subscription types. Beginning with web only offers such as Microsoft Business Basic, which is free up to 300 licenses for full-time, part-time and contract employees, as well as board members. If you have volunteers you need licensing for, the Microsoft F1 or Frontline or F3 licensing is available specifically for those supporting your organization in that capacity. For the sake of time, I won't dive fully into this chart, but I do want to note as part of follow-up to what was just mentioned regarding web-based subscription licensing. In order to access the traditional full office suite many of you are likely familiar with, your organization will need to request what's called a hybrid license. Some examples of this subscription type are Office 365 Enterprise E3, Microsoft Business Standard, Microsoft Business Premium, and the Microsoft Enterprise 3 or 5 offers. I also want to draw quick attention to the last item on the slide, Azure. For those interested in furthering their use of Microsoft Cloud, there is a $3,500 yearly grant nonprofits are eligible for. With over 200 different services as a part of Azure, it's definitely something worth looking into. And to continue back onto the Google Ad Grants, I'm just ad-living this, uh, Microsoft in July also released their own ad grants, uh, Microsoft Ads for Social Impact. I'm going to post the link uh, to this as it's not on this material uh, into the chat. Um, and share it be, so it could be shared with uh, anyone who is interested. Next slide, please. For those ready to begin the journey toward accessing Microsoft Cloud Solutions for your organizations, there's a three-step process. First, you'll need to create an account at the Microsoft Nonprofit Portal. Next, You'll need to have that account validated by our validation service team. This is a service we provide to Microsoft and it typically takes between five and seven business days to process. And the final part, we'll be introducing what we refer to as the TechSoup Cloud Manager or Cloud Manager tool to an authorized user's TechSoup account. Introducing this tool will allow you to access the storefront you'll be able to purchase licensing. If you find yourself stuck in any part of the process, we do have a team at the ready to assist via chat as shown in the bottom right corner. Next slide. Understanding the move to the cloud can be a challenge for organizations. We offer a free consultation service. During a session with us, we'll be able to assist with registration, choosing the appropriate subscription licensing, provide recommendations for services and courses, license implementation, and ongoing support to you at no cost. Next slide. So 
So as promised, I wanted to give you all a quick introduction or overview of what my team does. For the sake of time, I've broken it in, down into five general areas. Technology review and planning, organizational strategy, identifying opportunities for potential financial and volunteer support, triaging managed support projects and services, providing quotes and invoices for bulk product requests. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to you, Nick. All right, great. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and uh, yeah, as Kevin said, um, the customer success team is really there to help you make the most of the of the products and services you're getting from TechSoup. Um, and, and so think of them really with that word success in particular um, on the uh, on, on there. You know, in a corporation, folks might think of customer success a little bit differently, but but for us at TechSoup. We really do mean that. Like we we want the folks we're working with to succeed, to to succeed at executing their mission, and and so to use the technology products that we're helping you get and adopt. Um, but they are not the only team at TechSoup who's here to help you. Um, folks have different um, you know focus areas, and so uh, I want to talk about the client services team for a second here and introduce you to Kelly Garrett who is uh, an associate manager of that team. And the client services team really is there to help guide you through TechSoup itself. How do you use our platform? How do you use TechSoup? So Kelly, take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Garrett. I'm the associate manager of client services. Um, basically, client services is TechSoup's um, account name management and customer service all rolled into one. Uh, so we help assist with getting registered at TechSoup.org, um, getting qualified with us, and then helping navigate our website. Uh, once you request products, we can also assist you with accessing your fulfillment information, which is usually instructions on how to get the product started or a registration link or a coupon code, things along those lines. So when you're reaching out to TechSoup's customer service, you're talking to us and we're here to help you as best we can. Um, and we always love hearing from our members um, and being able to provide assistance on your qualification status, um, possibly the validation status on one of the um, nonprofit portals out there, Google for nonprofits, Microsoft for nonprofits, both have their own portals, other organizations do as well. So we can help out answer questions and help get you started and help check on your status and things like that. And next slide, please. So when it comes to uh, TechSoup, something we always like to encourage our members is to make sure that you are looking at all of the available information on our website. Um, TechSoup is a nonprofit, as you know, and we help facilitate a lot of um, donated and discounted nonprofit programs. So a lot of times the information that we have, we've already put it all online for you to review. And anything more in depth might need to be answered by the uh, company that creates and provides the product. Um, products usually are the exact same product available on the retail or commercial market. Um, there is no difference between the offer that's coming through here. It's just how it's fulfilled or how you access it um, might be different um, to ensure that you're getting that discounted or donated rate. On the product pages, um, basically, as you saw earlier, you know, there's many different ways to navigate our site. That um, top left corner there um, where it has the donor company drop down, um, it also has category and it has hardware. That's a great place to start if you're looking to see if we offer something from a particular um, uh, corporation. So say if you're looking for Microsoft stuff, if you click the donor company drop down, you'd see Microsoft. You could click on that and see everything that they have available through TechSoup. Once you have located your um, the product that your organization is interested in or curious about or know that you really need, that's when you want to click on it and open this product page or offer page. Um, on the page here, um, it's sometimes really easy to miss that there's three tabs of information that we highly recommend everyone reads before you check out with a product or um, a service on TechSoup.org. Um, on the far left here, we have description. That's usually where the general information is. Um, when you scroll down here, you should see major capabilities, general overview of what's going on with the product and, or the service, and um, some other important information. The middle tab I always say is very, very important to check. A lot of times that has 
the nuances of like a subscription that you're trying to access, or it has the link to the system requirements, things along those lines. Um, for this one, for example, it's QuickBooks Online Plus. The subscription details is the middle tab. It can sometimes have a different name, but that will highlight, you know, existing subscribers are not eligible for this product. Um, Intuit's not able to actually apply the donated um, nonprofit billing code to existing accounts, but it does have point out instructions in the Intuit FAQ that we have that tells you about how you can transfer your existing data to a new account and get that donated product. Um, the far right corner is also really important. It's got the rules, eligibility, and restrictions. Um, basically, every partner um, lets us know what type of organizations they're looking to donate to at the time. Budget can be a factor. Your location can be a factor. Um, your mission activities can be a factor. So you can always check there to see if you're meeting the eligibility requirements or if there's any rules or restrictions. Um, for example, QuickBooks, um, uh, you can only request one QuickBooks product per fiscal year, which is July 1st through June 30th every year. Um, and so that means that you'll request this product once in your lifetime to get the subscription going. And then once a year, you use your quantity allotment to renew this product. And all that information is highlighted in that far right tab there. So that's why I say it's really a good idea. Review all that information, make sure you're getting everything down, and then you can always reach out to us if you have any questions about it, and we'll try to answer your question, or we'll give you some good resources where you can find your answer. Um, once you do need support, thank you, Nick. Um, we do have up in the right top corner, it should be on every page, um, on techsoup.org, there is a help button that you can click. Um, and I do apologize, it sounds like there's some construction going on outside my house, so there's some background noise, apologies for that. Um, at the help page here, at the very top, there's two great things, that, uh, resources you can access. There's help topics, covers our most popular topics that you usually get contacted about. Um, you know, finding a validation token, for example, Google for nonprofits, among other partners of ours. Um, allow a validation token to be used to confirm your eligibility. So once you're qualified with TechSoup, you could go to this page and learn about how you can generate your Google for Nonprofits validation token. Um, there's other, also the frequently asked questions is in that blue tab. So you have to click on that to have that populate. Again, really good place to get started with some basic questions, things along those lines. Below here is where you can find, oh wait, go back really quick. Perfect. So um, the box at the bottom here, it shows the different places you can go for support. Um, if say you want to partner with TechSoup with a, a PR opportunity, we have an alias for our PR team that you can reach out to. Um, if you want, if you feel more secure faxing and documents to us instead of emailing to us, we have a, a fax machine um, phone number there available as well. But if you're looking for customer service, that's where you're going to want to click the contact us under customer support. And it'll take you to this next page. This is our contact us page. Um, so this is where you can fill out a contact us form. Usually you'll get a response in about three business days. Um, we do not have people manning um, the phones, chats, or our emails over the weekend. We are Monday through Friday. Um, so about three business days, you'll get a response to a contact us form. Um, you can also give us a call. The customer service phone number is listed at the bottom here, and it does call out our hours. Um, cut, the phone line is open from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, but if you don't have a chance to call us during that time, we do have a live chat. Um, it's available in the bottom right hand corner of this contact us page. Um, it will take you to TechSoup's client services, not the CSP team. Um, it does highlight when you're on this, you go into the CSP team for Microsoft questions and things like that. Those are usually Microsoft pages. But on this contact us page and many of our other pages on TechSoup.org, you'll see this little orange chat button. You can click on that and that will connect you to someone. Uh, those hours are typically 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific uh, Standard Time. Uh, today and tomorrow only, we are trying to keep those chats open till 5 to ensure that we're helping everybody get the Grant Station promotion. Really great promotion, as Nick uh, mentioned earlier. So we are here to help you. Um, you do need to be have a registered account and be able to check out with the Grant Station promotional product by 5 p.m. tomorrow to have the um, promotional price honored. Um, if you're not qualified yet or you're not able to provide payment right then, that's okay. You just wanna make sure you check out with that Grant Station promotion before the 5 p.m. deadline. And then we can work with you to get your organization qualified for TechSoup um, or provide instructions on how you can get us payment and what the deadlines are for that. 
Um, so that's the three ways you can get in touch with client services. Chat pretty much on a lot of pages. The contact us page is the best place to go because it's always there. Uh, phone support, which is available Monday through Friday, just like chat from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then the contact us form, we say usually it's about three business days. Depends though. Sometimes we're a little busy, might take up to five business days. But we do try to make sure we're in that window if not a little bit faster um one thing to keep in mind about TechSoup's client services is we have a ton of different partners with a ton of different offers out there um it's so we're not able to become experts on the product or provide expert download and installation support we definitely have resources for you we can definitely get you on the right track we can definitely point you in the direction of a, the support team for a partner or resources we might have so that's something we can absolutely assist you with but if you're having IT issues, or you're running, or you have really in-depth questions about a product or service, or you need, um, you know, step-by-step -step support with downloading and installing something, usually we're going to have you try contacting the partner first that created the product. So, for example, with QuickBooks Online, say you were trying to get QuickBooks Online downloaded and installed, we would tell you to contact QuickBooks Online support because they're... Um, Representatives have access to their system, they know the registration process, and they can help get you all set up there. Um, so if you're having TechSoup account issues, basic questions, you didn't get the email with your registration link from us, things along those lines, client services can absolutely assist you with. For more IT issues, in-depth product questions, product support, that's usually what will direct you to either the partner or one of our TechSoup uh, help services. The help desk services, they can always assist and provide, um, you know, download installation port, uh, tech planning, things like that that was gone over earlier. And their fees are always much lower than a retail IT service. So it's definitely always a good backup is to check out our TechSoup services. Um, sometimes they offer a lower support service that even the partners do. Some partners do charge support um, fees. So it's just something to keep in mind that we do have those TechSoup services there um, for all of our nonprofits, uh, IT and product support needs. Perfect. So that's all we have for client services. Um, we look forward to working with you. And again, we are there for you if you need anything. And we'll always have a path to kind of direct you to if it's something we can't answer. So welcome to TechSoup. And we enjoy having you here. Great. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, and uh, for those of you who've joined us today, thank you so much for, for spending some of the time of your day here. I know you've got plenty on your plates already. And I think uh, just to wrap it up, I, the, the thought I really want to leave you with is, um, although, you know, TechSoup is a technology organization, right? It's right in the name of, of the organization. I think the most valuable part about TechSoup is actually the people. Um, and, and I know it almost sounds a little bit corny, but I, I think one of the things that is incredibly valuable about TechSoup and how we bring a lot of value to the nonprofits that we work with, and again, we are one ourselves, is that we have real people who are going to talk to you and they're going to help you with whatever the problem is that you're encountering, whether it is that you can't afford full price on some giant offer that's out on the internet, and we might have an offer that can help you solve that budget problem, or if it's a problem with implementing something that's just beyond your depth, beyond your expertise, we can help with that. Or if you're having a problem with us ourselves um, and you need a little bit of assistance, like navigating TechSoup systems, we have real people and um, we're here to help you. And it's not just because you're like a paying customer in just an economic transaction. Because we're a 501c3 committed to building a more equitable planet, just like you are, we have the same mission as you. And we really do care whether or not the tech access we are providing nonprofits is helpful. So please know that TechSoup is here for you. Um, and uh, as I said, we're going to be sending out a copy of this presentation afterwards. Um, and uh, all the live links are in there. You should be able to click through to things that you need help with. Um, and uh, I think there, I think we're probably going to share the chat as well. I'll have to double check on that. Um, but really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for coming and joining us and um, hope to see you all online. Okay. Bye-bye.